Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone today? Bless. Good. Good to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Real quick, we'll make some announcements and then we'll get started with some singing. Um, the new daily breads are out, so if you pick them up, they're on the tables in both foyers. Be sure to get one. I don't know if it'll be this time or next go around, maybe one of the last times we actually get them here in the church. Um, because we just got to where so few people are taking them. I wrote them and told them just to quit sending them because they can use their resources better elsewhere. So again, uh, you can uh, write into them. There's an envelope in here you can fill out and send in. They will send them to you free of charge to your house. Or you can go online and you can read it every day. Or they've got an app for that. You can download the app and uh, you can go on the app and you can read every day the daily devotional. And they, you get a mail to your house every now and then. They, I think they send out several times a year special on Easter, Christmas, and things like that that they send out for free as well. So, again, uh, be sure and grab one of these and then just know that at some point we'll quit getting those, all right? All right. Tonight, remember, we have a singing. It will start at 6 p.m. Higher Hope will be here. And so I hope that you'll be able to come for that. And, uh, again, we're not eating. We're just going to have the singing at 6 and so you come uh, looking forward to that, and uh, then we will take up a love offering uh, at the end of that service uh, for them. And so, uh, again, just kind of looking forward to that. Also, mark your calendars on September the 20th. September the 20th at 10 a.m., we will have homecoming. All right, we delayed homecoming, and so we are going to try to have it. And... Uh, Unless something crazy happens, and you know, in this day and time, you never know. Amen. But we're planning on having homecoming. It will be a different format than what we're used to because of the virus and everything. We will continue to have the pew set up and social distance. Um, we have a sign-up sheet so that we have an idea roughly of how many people are coming. And so uh, just if you would put your name on there. And then I have how many people are attending, including yourself. So if you're going to bring some family, just write that number in. And then also, if you'll be eating, yes or no, because we are planning on trying to eat that day as well. We are working on a plan so we can social distance and still fellowship and all that good stuff. So this will be on the table up here. Uh, you be sure and fill it out. And, uh, and so that we'll just have a rough idea how many people are coming so we can get the food order and all that. Also, for those that are watching online, if you would like to come, if you will call or text me with the same information, let me know that you're coming, how many people will be coming with you, and whether you'll be staying to eat or not, okay? Uh, we will be eating after all the services, because I told uh, when we had the meeting last week, I said, I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to eat and stuff my belly and then have to wear a mask for an hour and a half and sleep, and I just am not able to do that. So, two, 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 yeah, two yeah. by two is going to be here. And um, so what's going to happen is that morning we're going to start at 10. We'll do two or three congregational songs, and we will have preaching. And then immediately after the preaching, we will have the concert. Uh, they will be singing. And then at the end of the singing, then we'll eat. And so we will do it in that order uh, just to, to make things easier for everybody. And uh, so that is the plan right now. Also, uh, weather permitting, we will be eating outdoors. Um, and that way we can more, more better. Is that a good, probably not. <laughs> English teachers just do like that. Okay? So we can more better fellowship. More gooder. Y'all hear? Yeah, more gooder, more I like gooder. that, yep. <laughs> yeah, the real meaning dinner on the ground. We're gonna have try to do it outside. If weather does not permit, then we'll try to make arrangements in here with the table spread out, the rooms where a family can, you know, go to one of the classrooms. Those that can go downstairs, we'll try to set something up downstairs. So we will try to work it out uh, however we can work it out. So just know that that's coming. Also know that unlike before where everybody cooks food and brings, you can just bring a dessert. All the food will be provided. That's right. Okay? And uh, we will have it set up, and we will have people serving uh, rather than going and getting your food. Uh, and that's in keeping in line with uh, all the requirements for uh, the government for this COVID stuff. 
So again, uh, the, the sign-up sheet will be down here on the table, and uh, just make a note of that, and we will be giving you updates and more information as we get closer and closer to that homecoming time. All right, I believe that's all the announcements that I have to make. Yes, ma'am. Um, Friday's April will have your partial And Lord, today we lift up the situation in the world with this disease. Uh, we just ask uh, again, Father, that you would move in it and that uh, you would use it, Lord, uh, to, to draw people closer to you, to draw people back to you, to maybe draw people uh, to seek out the Lord Jesus Christ as they never have before. Lord, we pray for the governments at this time. We pray for our government, Lord, that all this foolishness that is going on and the government amongst all the parties, it's not one group, it's all of them. Yes. That, Lord, they would come to their senses. Lord, most of them need to come to you. Yes. That they would just get saved. What a different country, what a different world we'd have. Open their hearts and minds, Father. And, Lord, for all the violence that's going on, we pray that there would be peace in those situations as well on all sides again. Father, help us as a church again to be lights in this dark, dark world. To go and proclaim the name of Jesus. Proclaim the salvation that can only come through Him. And see lives change. Father, again, we're grateful for this day and for your blessings. We lift up those on the prayer list. You know each and every need. Bless us now through the rest of this service, and we ask it all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Have your Bibles this morning. You'll turn to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Amen. 
And so she went from that place changed. And so we talked about come as you are. And if you remember, I said that we would take that. The, that day we applied it to those that are in the world that are lost and that need Jesus. A description of us as we were before we came to Jesus. But I also wanted to make an application of come as you are for those that are saints, those that are saved, those that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Now what's that all about? Well, hopefully it will unfold itself as we uh, continue here to talk. You know, so often, and I mention it quite often in sermons, uh, uh, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And we talk about that all the time. We talk about, yes, by grace are you saved through faith. And we tell people that are sinners, just like uh, with this woman, uh, there is nothing that you can do. You know, people so often say, well, I need to get myself together before I come to church, or I need to get myself together before I get saved. If that's the case, you'll never get saved. Right. Because you can never get yourself together. Oh, you can clean the outside, but you can't clean the inside. Only Jesus Christ can clean the inside. Right. And so we tell people that, but as Christians sometimes, and we still quote this verse, we say, you know, salvation is by grace. However, as Christians sometimes, and especially as we've been Christians for a while, uh, we may say that, but sometimes our actions or the things that we say don't prove that to be out. And what I mean by that is um, we say that, yes, you're saved by grace, but then what happens in our lives? Uh, we backslide and maybe we are commit some sin or we do something that we know is not pleasing to God. And what is the, one of the first things we do? We say, oh, I need to get myself together. I need to straighten myself up. Maybe it's a situation where you're out of church for a period of time and you said, boy, I really need to get myself together and get back in church because God must be so disappointed with me. But can I tell you, just as when you are not saved, there is nothing that you can do to cleanse yourself. As a Christian, there is still nothing that you can do to cleanse yourself. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ right. just as you are. Just as someone lost will say, uh, uh, or we tell them, you cannot get yourself together and clean up your act. Neither can you do it as a Christian. Now, does that mean as Christians that we're not striving to do better and that we need to do better and that we need to act a certain way? Yes, uh, to a degree that is true. However, it all still comes back to Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the only one that can clean me up. Jesus is trying to draw me back to him. When I was out of church for a while, I didn't just get up one day and say, you know what? Boy, I think I need to be back in church. No, it was the Holy Spirit. It was the Lord Jesus Christ that said, Greg, you need to get back in church right. with my people. You need to get back in church. You need to come back to me. You need to get out of the sin and get uh, cleaned up. But folks, it was not that I could get up and dust myself off, but I needed to come as I was to Jesus and fall on my face before him and say, Lord, I have strayed from you, but now I have returned. Would you Amen. forgive me? Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. And let him be the one to cleanse me up. Now, did the Lord call me? Did he woo me? Did he draw me? Yes. Did I have to do something? Yes, I had to get up off my rear end and do that that he told me to do. So right. it's not that I could do absolutely nothing. That's right. It's the same with repentance. I was uh, listening to some sermons about I've been studying grace lately. And we're going to be, you know, we've talked about grace some, and we're going to talk more about grace uh, probably in sermons down the road. Uh, you'd think it'd be simple, but it can get complicated. <laughs> yeah. We make it complicated, let me put it that way. But it's like with repentance. I can go out, well, you know, and again, I use myself as an example because I, 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 I like to drink alcohol and I used to go out and get drunk. And you know, I can go out and get drunk 
And I could be sitting there at the bar or at my house or wherever I'm drinking and I could be just slobbering drunk. Mm. And I could say, oh God, I sure am sorry that I'm drunk. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Lord, I shouldn't have gotten drunk. God, I'm sorry. Would you forgive me? Have I repented? No. Nope. No! I haven't repented. That's right. I can sit there and say all day long, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but what is repentance? Repentance is when I put it down and I say, no, I know I can't mess with that. I know I can't fool with that stuff because of what it does to me. I need to leave it alone and so I don't just say, God, I need to leave it alone, but I turn away from that and right. I go a different direction than the way that I was going Amen. before. That is true repentance. That's true. That's right. Amen. Because I can talk the talk all day long, but right. until I walk the walk, Amen. it doesn't mean anything. That's right. And so we see that here in this picture today. Now, most of the time when we read about the prodigal son, uh, most preachers, and I've preached a message on this before, yeah. preach it having to do with salvation, how this young man uh, needed salvation, and he woke up to the fact that he needed salvation, and he came to the Father, and uh, the Father uh, brought him into the fold. But I would say that we can also apply this to uh, Christians today that have backslidden or that have committed some sin and realize it and come back to the Father in repentance. Amen. And so that's how I want to look at this passage of Scripture today. And so again, looking at verse 11, it tells us that this man had two sons, and the younger son came to him one day. Now remember in Jewish culture, this was a slap in the face. Father, give me the share of my inheritance. In other words, Dad, why aren't you dead yet so I can get what's mine? Mm -mm -mm. And so he gets his inheritance, and the Bible tells us not long after, what does he do? He takes a journey to a far country and wasted it with riotous living. Right. And so what does he do? He gives that that the Father has given him that that is a blessing and he takes and he takes it into the world instead of using it to honor and glorify his father he wasted on righteous living boy there's a whole sermon in that all by itself yep how many of these pop stars and rappers and all these other people you hear they oh well i started singing in church mm. yeah. mm -mm -mm. but boy that money yep Got a hold to them. Oh, you got a good voice. You need to come out and get in the world. You need to cut out. You need to do this and that. And now they're running around, and boy, God's the farthest thing from their mind. Mm -mm -mm. Took what God had given them, a blessing, and spend it now on righteous living. Right. Spend it in the world. Use that which God gave them, not to honor and glorify God. But to do that, that the world approves of. And we know that the world doesn't approve of God. That's right. And so he goes out and he spends these things and he wastes them on righteous living. And then he spends everything he has. He doesn't have a penny left. Oh, and as we've said before, how many friends did he have when he had the money? But as soon as the money was gone, where were those friends? <laughs> Try. How many doors did he knock on and say, hey, I ain't had anything to eat today. Can you help me out? Uh, who are you? Right. <laughs> oh, man, don't you? I'm the one that brought you your brand new car over here. Yep. Uh, I don't know who you are. Car of mine. Mm -mm -mm. Get off my doorstep. Has nothing left whatsoever. And so what does he have to do? Well, this poor Jewish boy has to go work for a Gentile. Mm -mm -mm. And if that's not bad enough, what's the most demeaning job you can do to go to work for a Gentile? Peace. You go swap the pigs. Yep. And that's what he ends up doing. And yet still, he has nothing. Mm. He's even envious of that that the pigs are eating. Yep. 
He has sunk just about as low as he could go. And that's what the world does. It will pull people out of the Father's house with promises of friendship and riches and fame. Tribe. But what does it end up doing? It ends up chewing people up and spitting them out. How many times in the last month have you heard of somebody famous committing suicide? Right, that's right. Why? Because all this fame and money and notoriety did what? Nothing. Because it can't solve a problem. Only Jesus Christ can. Amen. Amen. And that problem is a lost soul that is seeking to be found in a world that it cannot be found. That's right. That's right. This young man who lived in the father's house but decided he didn't like the father's rules or he didn't like the lifestyle that daddy had and thought that he could do it better. And how many times do we hear that in church? Well, I did come to church, but I don't like coming to church because I just feel like it's stifling or I can't do all I want to do or I can't uh, be this or do that or do what I want. I think I mentioned it uh, Wednesday night uh, in the Bible study. For those that have seen it, Teresa and I have been talking. And, and uh, you know, it, the, the thoughts that occurred to my head, you know, people said, well, uh, I would come to church or I would get saved, but I enjoy my life because right now I get to do the things that I want to do. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want it, however I want it. Now, if you want to shock them, you tell them, you know what? I can too. I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want. But what's the difference? My wants have changed. My Amen. wants are no longer for the things of the world. But my wants are trying to get in line with what God the Father wants. Amen. Amen. And so my wants and desires change. And my wants and desires get in line with God. And then slowly but surely, those wants and desires in the world fade away. <coughs> Every now and then they rear their ugly head. Trying to draw us back into the That's world. Right. <clears throat> but our wants will have changed. And so we see this young man that is feeding these swine and, and living in a squalid conditions. As far as we know, I mean, look at it again. He sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. You kind of get the picture that maybe he was sleeping out there with the swine. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, surely this man that he's working for is not going to put him uh, in a place with a roof over his head and not feed him. Mm. And so here he is feeding the pigs, most likely living or he's living in something that's probably a shack, if nothing to it. And he gets to the point that he's so tired and he's so dirty and he's so hungry that the Bible says he came to himself. In other words, one day he woke up and he went, well, duh. Mm -hmm. Look at the slaves in my father's house. Amen. They are slaves, but they've got it better off than I do. They got three hots and a guy. <laughs> yes, they're servants, but look at how much better treated they are than I am. Yep. I am going to return to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called <coughs> thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And so he said, I, I, I woke up one day and I said, you know, I wouldn't dare go back to the Father and say, hey, your son's home, but maybe he will hire me as a servant and at least I can take a bath every now and then and get something to eat. Right. For those here today or listening online that have ever backslid, mm. do you remember the day that you came to yourself? Mm. Do you remember the day that you woke up and you said, what am I doing? Look at the filth I am in when I had it good in the Father's house. Mm -hmm. I had it good when I went to church. I had it good when I was fellowshipping with God's people. I had it good when I was reading my Bible and praying and doing all those things. 
every day because I guarantee you, once you leave the Father's house, you're going to quit doing all those things. Amen. That's right. Who, somebody sent Teresa's video last night. Was it you, Lynn Trace Atkins? Yeah. No. No, she didn't send that one. She sent another one. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Somebody sent a video of Trace Atkins. I guess it's a new song. Maybe it's an old one. I don't know because I don't listen to that stuff. But it's something about I, I'd rather be fishing and thinking about God than thinking about God in church. Or thinking about fishing in church. Yeah. And he's out there standing on the bank, he's got his Bible open, and at one point he's, he's in the boat, and he goes through this whole thing, talking about, you know, I could be sitting in church, but all I'd be thinking about is fishing and what kind of lure I'm going to use or I could be out here fishing thinking about God. Hmm. And we were watching it, and I turned to her, and I said, wow, really? <laughs> I said, yeah, that always sounds well and good. Until that fish gets that hook. Yep. And the last word out of your mouth are probably this a big one, God help me really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then if you just about get it in, it breaks the line, it pulls the hook and gets away, then you sing a few choice words, but it ain't got nothing to do with God. Right. That's right. Now I used to not do it fishing, but I did it on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Oh God, this show is beautiful. Look how pretty this is. Blanky blank I've sliced. <sighs> think about God anymore. All I think about is why am I slicing? What can I do to fix it? Now, slice for you that don't know those first right handed golfers when your ball does like that. Mm. And I get to where I'd have to aim over this way <laughs> so they would go that way and aim in the fairway the way I wanted to. Is that right, Jim? <laughs> I mean, I had a banana ball. Sometimes I thought that thing was a boomerang. It's going to come all the way back to me. <laughs> But all that to say, that all sounds great. I can worship God at home. I don't need to be in church, but you won't do it. That's right. That's right. Eventually, ask these people that don't come to church anymore, how often do you open your Bible? I don't. Right. How often do you pray? Well, I may say some little something every now and then, but it doesn't happen regularly. How do I know? Because I've been there. Right. I've been there. Thank God, one day, I came to my senses. Amen. I woke up. I came to myself and said, what are you doing? Look how good it was in the Father's house. Mm -hmm. And boy, you got to bite that bullet and come back to church. Knowing all them good Baptists are going to be going, well, look who showed up today. <laughs> But you know what? At the end of the day, I don't stand before them and judge. Amen. I stand before Jesus Christ. That's right. right. So they can talk all they want. That's right. <laughs> but he comes to himself. And he says he's going to go to the Father. He realizes the sinfulness of his ways. He looks at himself. Says, I'm going to go back to the Father. Maybe he'll hire me as a hired servant. And so he goes back. How many sets of clothes do you think he had? himself up a little bit or maybe he had a little puddle or something and he tries to clean up. How many of you that had children remember when they were little and you told them to go clean up and get ready for supper because they've been outside playing all day when they were filthy and when they come in from the bathroom and you look at them and you say, did you clean up yourself? Did you clean yourself up? And they say, yeah, but all they did was smear. <laughs> Not just clean the mud that's over here because now smeared across the here. And they just put their palms on the water because it's still dirt caked all in the fingernails. Mm -hmm. He's 
You've been in a pig pen feeding pigs. Right. Pigs stink. Yep. Like good as hell smell like that when you cook them. <laughs> 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 But here he comes with a raggedy old clothes, smelling like a pig pen, dirty. Hmm. Why? Because he has nothing to clean himself up with. All he can do is come and fall on the mercy and grace of the Father. Amen. Because ultimately he knows that if the Father will hire him as a servant, the Father will bring him in, and the Father will clean him up. Amen. Because only the Father can clean him up. Nobody else is going to do it. That's right. Amen. And folks, when we backslide, when we turn from God, and we finally come to ourselves and realize, I am falling away from God. I am backslid and I need to get back in. Oh, I need to just come as I am. I don't need to say, well, boy, I sure need to quit doing this first. I need to quit doing that first. No. You get back in the word church. You get back on your face at the altar before God and say, God, only you are the one that can clean me up and draw me back to you. Amen. Amen. He's already done the drawing. That's why you came back to start with. That's right. But just like this young boy, he's the only one that will be able to clean you up. Yep. You see, maybe he did take a bath. Maybe he found a stream and, and, and washed himself and washed his clothes and said, boy, I look good. But what do you think about those people that he passed on the road? Mm. Yep. And what do you think about when he went before the Father? Mm. Thought he was clean. But he really wasn't. Remember in Isaiah in the Old Testament it says all of our works are as filthy rags. That's right. We come and say, Oh Lord, look at what I did. Mm. And we're still filthy. Because only he can clean us up. And so what we need to do instead of trying to get ourselves together is just come back to God as we are and let him clean us up. Amen. Amen. Because he's the only one that can do it. That's right. And so it says in verse 20, he arose and he came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The father was out looking for you. You know, I was thinking about this this morning. Had the father been out there every day from the day mm. he left? Mm -mm -mm. That just seems kind of strange to me. Because what if he had gone out and spent the money wisely and made something of himself? Right. Man, it popped in my head. I wonder if some of the people would come along and tell the father what was going on with his son. Right. Hey, saw your son. Yeah, how's he doing? Boy, he is partying it up. Mm. Partying it up. Got lots of friends. Got the latest chariot with all the fancy stuff on. Mm -mm -mm. A few months later, hey, saw your son. How's he doing? Working for a Gentile feeding pigs. Mm -mm -mm. Really? What happened to my money? Spent everything. Mm. Doesn't have a friend in the world. You think maybe then the father began to go out and work? Mm. Well, at some point, surely he's going to come to his senses and come home. Hey, I saw your son the other day. How's he doing? Lost a lot of weight. Mm. Clothes are tattered, got holes in his shoes. Hard to tell him far from him, did he? He was feeding. Mm -mm -mm. Wish my son would come home. Mm. And my son would only come back. Mm. You think that God says the same thing about us and we backslide? Amen. Oh, they would only come back if they knew what they were missing, would only come back. Amen. So the father is out looking. 
And he sees his son, and boy, he runs. He says, wow, I knew you were going to come home one day, son. Mm. Sometimes we think God's so mad at me that there's no way I'm going to come knock on the door and he's going to say, hmm, I don't know who that is at the door. Mm -mm -mm. But just like this father, and that's one of the points Jesus is making, whether you're getting saved or you're saved and you're backslidden, is that when he knows you're coming, he is excited and he'll run out to meet you. Amen. Amen. He is thrilled to death that the child is coming home. That's right. Doesn't care how bad you smell what you look like. And he says what he's rehearsed to the Father. Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called your son. Mm -mm -mm. And what daddy did at it. Get that. Now there's one thing I want you to see here. In verse 11, it says a certain man had two sons. Mm -hmm. And the younger son asked for his share and left and did righteous living. But when he comes back, what does the father say? Look uh, ahead to verse 24. For this my son was dead. Mm -hmm. He never quit being his son. That's right. Even though he did wrong, he was still his son. Right. <laughs> now, I think one important thing, and this will not bear this out, but just like we talked about repentance earlier, what did the son have to do? Remember? Oh, Dad, why did I leave? Your servants had it so much better. Come here, bacon. Let me give you some more food. <laughs> Come here, ham. Boy, I wish I'd never left. I can't believe the shape I'm in. Mm -hmm. What did he have to do? Get up and go. He had to get up and make a decision that it was going to go back. Amen. That's right. God's not going to come out and grab us by the ear and say, you get back here right now, young man. You get back here right now, young lady. Well, Daddy was not looking for him, but he wasn't going to go drag him back. He just said, if he's going to come back, he's got to come back. That's right. And so I go back in the Bible in Matthew, I think it's in chapter 24, where it says that he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. To me, that is the difference. If somebody leaves church or leaves God, you know, we've talked about this before. Well, I used to be a Christian, but I'm not anymore. And they never come back. Can I tell you, they were never a Christian to start with. Right. They were never a child. They were never a son to start with. Amen. Right. What if there was somebody else that was feeding the pigs with him? And he says, hey, go tell my daddy. And so he goes up and goes, dad. And dad goes, I have no idea who you are. Mm -mm The son had to come back. That's right. Christian, if we are truly saved, I don't care how far you get in the world, it, God is always going to be in the back of your mind. Amen. How do I know? Because it was with me the same way. It didn't matter how drunk I got or what I did. Always in the back of my mind, God was there. And so I knew because he was drawing me back to him. But if I never came back, could I truly say that I was saved to start with? I would say no. Some people would say yes. 
Some people would just say, say the prayer and you can live however you want because God's grace will cover it all. When you die, you're good. No. You can't say, oh, I'm baptized, I'm good, and then go out and say, oh, I really don't believe in God, but hey, I got baptized just in case. Mm -hmm. I come to church once a year just in case. Mm -hmm. No. That's right. He is going to constantly be Amen. drawing you back to him. That's right. So I say, if you can come to church for a while and get baptized and go through all the motion and then leave and you're done and you say, hey, why don't you come to, oh, I really, nah, I'm not interested in that stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Now, at the end of the day, that's between you and God, whether you saved or not. That's right. But if you have no compulsion whatsoever to be back with God's people, now again, I, it may be years. I don't know. But somewhere in the back of your head, God should be drawing, and if he's not drawing, then you really need to think about your salvation. Amen. That's right. But I know when I came back to God, when I came to myself and realized I have... Uh, I'm not where I ought to be in my relationship with the Lord. Mm. All I could do was come unto Him just as I was. Amen. Not straighten my act up again. Not get myself together. There were things I had to do. I had to make conscious decisions. That's right. But I had to come back to Him. He's the one that cleaned me up. That's right. Look what the Father did. Verse 22. The Father said to his servants, again, he said, listen, I'm the one worthy to be called your son. And he said, hey, sir, I mean, like you're not even listening to him. Hey, hey, come here, come here. Go get the best robe I got in the house and bring it out here and put on it. Where's my signet ring? Go get my signet ring. And bring it out and put it on his finger. Folks, what does that mean? What is he doing? What was the signet ring? That was the thing that showed you were in the household for a male. That was, a, that was what you used to show that you were authorized to make decisions for that household. That's right. <coughs> You've seen in movies before. Remember that four wax on documents and yep. make a ring and stick in it? That was their signet ring. What were they doing? They were saying, this is authorized by me. That's right. Gave him his, what is he doing? He is restoring him to sonship. Right. Well, I would say, as I said a minute ago, he really, really, really never quit being a son. He just brought him back into that close relationship again. Right. One man said, uh, daringly, Jesus pictured God, not waiting for a shame child to slink home or standing on his dignity when he came, but running out to gather him shamed and ragged and muddied as he was to his welcoming arms. The name Father has at once darkened the color of sin and heightened the splendid, splendid glory of forgiveness. The Father is waiting to forgive. People would only come to him. Amen. Now let me say one other thing. Well, a couple other things. Does that mean this boy had free license to go out? Hey, Dad, give me some more money. Out. No. Oh, I bet every now and then those thoughts may have gotten his head. Boy, I remember when I was big man in town. Mm. I remember when I was living in the world and how good it was, but then all of a sudden I bet the smell of that pigsty mm. wafted back in his nose. He went, oh, never mind. 
That's right. Never mind. Do you think that boy ever went out again like that? I don't know. I believe he said the best place to be is at Daddy's house. Yep. And this is why I'm it don't matter if he never gives me another penny. I'll stay right here. That's right. Again, some Christians will get saved and think, well, God's grace forgives everything so I can go out and do what I want. Mm -mm -mm. Galatians 5.13, New Living Translation. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Amen. Remember I said earlier, your wants change. That's right. Your priorities change. Paul here is telling the Galatians, listen, you don't use your freedom for sin, but you use it for what? Love, to love others because that should be what your want and desire is now. That's right. First Peter 2.16 says that's free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Again, in the New Living Translation, that says don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Mm. That's right. God hasn't wiped our slate clean enough for us to go do it again. That's right. He has wiped our slate clean to be part of his household, to be sons and daughters, and to be about his business. And his business is not the world's business. That's right. So we see, to a degree, there's not a lot of difference. When I was lost, I had to come to Jesus as I was. Right. When I was backslidden and I came to myself, I had to come to Jesus as I was. That's right. Let him do the cleansing, not just of the body, but of the heart. Amen. Isn't that what he said? I'll take that hard stone <coughs> and I'll put in it a heart of flesh. Amen. I'll put in it a heart that's warm, a heart that's full of love, a heart that has the desires that God has that has the wants that God has. It wants to do the things that God wants done. That's right. But it had to start in both instances with me coming to God just as I was and letting Him do the process. That's right. done this in a while, but I want to have a time of invitation today. Maybe you'll play just as I am. I guess we can have folks turn if they want to sing, but I would prefer folks would just be in prayer. We're going to open the altar if you want to come to the altar. You can stand where you're at. You can kneel. You can stay seated. Most everybody here, I pretty much know where you're at because you're here. But we can be here physically and yet still away from the Lord. But I would ask, first of all, I ask myself, where am I at today? Maybe there's been a desire to backslide. Can I tell you? The best place to be is in the Father's house. In close fellowship and proximity with Him. And then the second thing I would ask is, do you have a loved one that is backslidden? Pray that they would come back to the Lord. That he would draw them back to himself. And that somehow someone would help them to recognize that they can't clean their act up first. They need to come as they are. And let God do the cleaning. And then thirdly, do you have a family member that is lost today? Pray for them. Maybe they said the same thing. I need to sow my wild oats or I need to get myself together. But you need to tell them only the Father can cleanse you. Only the Father can get you together. You just need to come to Him as you are and let Him be the one that changes you. I think we all have to do 
plenty to pray about today. Father, we are just grateful again for this day. Lord, as I look out, I see people praying and some of the needs I'm aware of, Lord, many I'm not. But God, you're aware of all of us. All of us have family members or friends that are lost and on their way to hell. God, I pray that they would come to they would just come as they are. Mm. Lord, if they won't listen to us, that somebody would come in their path yes. that they would listen to. Lord, we have one that's backslidden. I just pray today would be the day, Father, that you convict their heart. They say, oh, I miss the Father's house. Mm. I miss fellowshipping with my brothers and sisters. I miss that time of being in your word, that time of prayer and fellowship with you. Mm -hmm. Father, cleanse me and draw me back to you. Mm -hmm. And Father, for ourselves, maybe some have been convicted to be drawn away. or Maybe it's just a daily sin in our lives and we think, Lord, I need to get this mess straightened out. I can't have this every day, but Lord, you truly are the only one that can straighten out. Yes. Help us to turn from those things and to turn to you. Father, you know the need. You know the desires of the hearts that are of those that are here today, those that are listening today. And I thank you for what you're going to do in each and every situation. Again, Father, go with us from this place and help us to be light in this dark world. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, remember to sign up for homecoming. And also, for those that are greeters, I need, we need to see you in the back for about five minutes. We need everybody that's a greeter. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good day. Six o'clock tonight. This Sunday, Sunday. Thank you.